the officers... Tonight in 7 News, a man in his 40s among 10 new COVID deaths. More than 450 new cases, but the Premier is still hopeful they'll start dropping soon. New questions about how the virus was allowed to run rampant in our aged care homes. More fines and arrests for not wearing a mask, including a woman who abused staff at Bunnings. Inside the COVID ward at one of our biggest hospitals, the doctors fighting to save lives, a special report. The chief health officer's warning about masks, he says, simply don't stop the spread. And drama in the West as the Magpies face the Eagles without their skipper. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. It's been our deadliest day so far in the COVID crisis. Ten Victorians have lost their lives, including one man in his 40s. Our healthcare system is under increasing strain. It's been forced to bring in nearly a 1,000 retired and student workers, and troops are now set to man ambulances. From a sombre Premier came the worst news of Victoria's pandemic so far. Uh, I'm very sad to have to report that there are now 71 people whose lives have been lost, lost because of this virus. Ten lives lost in 24 hours, our highest daily toll. Three women in their 70s and 80s and seven men, the youngest in his 40s. This doesn't discriminate between age, doesn't discriminate on gender. But the government's now really trying scared. to counter COVID myths with a new ad campaign. COVID doesn't pick and choose, it picks everyone. I have coughing fits that go for uh, one to two minutes. 42,000 tests were processed overnight, the highest ever number, and they brought more tough news, another 459 cases of COVID. The hospital figures are stable, 228 in hospital, 42 in intensive care. But a leading doctor featured in the government's campaign says being in the ICU with coronavirus is traumatic for everyone. They're critically unwell and their families can't visit. I just can't imagine how difficult that is for them. The health system is so far coping, but the huge number of cases is having an impact, with 381 healthcare workers testing positive and hundreds more now isolating. The government's revealed more than 800 former and student healthcare workers are now back in the system. And from tomorrow, the army will start training to help paramedics. Particularly around carrying equipment, driving back while the paramedics are delivering care, um, moving stretches. The vast majority of outbreaks now are in aged care homes and workplaces. New clusters today include 12 cases at Craigieburn's Fresh Plus supermarket, another 12 at the Lynn Fox warehouse in Truganina and three cases at the St Kilda base backpackers. The numbers are flattening but remain stubbornly high. The Premier hopes compulsory masks make the difference. That will start to see not just the stability that we seem to be enjoying at the moment but uh, it'll start to drive numbers down. Melbourne is now nearly halfway through its six-week lockdown, but with 4,233 active cases, an extension appears more probable every day. A day in this is like a month, and I can't predict where we'll be tomorrow, uh, let alone with any certainty uh, give you a sense of where we'll be in another three and a half weeks. And of course, that number of active cases makes contact tracing even more challenging. From now on, Victoria has to report to federal authorities the time that it's taking to do that contact tracing. But we know that many Victorians are reporting delays. The opposition says it's clear that more resources are needed and says the state government should spend whatever it takes. Mitch. Laurel Irving at Southbank, thank you. Seven of the ten Victorians who died overnight were residents of aged care homes. As the toll grows, so too does the number of questions being posed by grieving families. Out of desperation, these relatives showed up at St Basil's in Faulkner demanding answers. Calls to the home simply ring out as coronavirus spreads throughout. No one knows where they are. They don't even know if they're in the nursing home or they've been moved. Evangelia Attackus took a call from staff on Friday to say her dad, Ilias, had died. We got to say goodbye after he passed away, so not... We didn't even get to say anything, and that's what hurts us the most. 
The family knew the grandfather had coronavirus but had no idea he was so ill. St Basil's staff have told the Health Workers Union that management didn't take the use of gloves and masks seriously. Evangelia, a healthcare worker herself, is furious. I can't stress enough how they failed not to... I mean, the PPE was there. I don't understand why they, it takes two seconds to pick it up and put it on before you do a task. The St Basil's workforce has been replaced, but pictures taken today suggest infection control is still an issue. It's a disgrace. It's a national disgrace. The world is watching this. The world is watching what Australia is doing. There's no way to treat the elderly. Four more cases overnight take the total at St Basil's to 78. Six residents have died. Estia Ardia now has 82 cases, including three deaths. Of the 10 Victorians who died overnight, seven were in aged care. One of those was Dimitrios, another St Basil's resident, who was transferred to the Northern Hospital and died one week after his diagnosis. His family is considering legal action. Angry, shocked. Yeah. Who are you angry at? St Basil's, really, to be honest with you. Some residents are still being moved out of St Basil's, but it is optional. If residents wish to stay, federal authorities managing this centre won't force the move. And in some cases, it's simply too dangerous to move frail residents, despite the threat of coronavirus on the inside. Whenever you move aged care, particularly very frail aged care residents, it can be a very traumatic uh, and sometimes tragic uh, process. Authorities say even more tragedy in the homes is inevitable. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Conspiracy theorists refusing to wear masks are being warned they will be fined if they continue to ignore the new rules. The Premier has lashed out at them as they proudly post videos online of their confrontations with police. Masks have been mandatory for four days, yet police are still finding Victorians ignoring the new law. I have to put you under arrest. If you arrest me, I will have you charged yes. with false arrest. That's OK. And what's more, it's armed arrest because you have a weapon and I don't. Yes. The woman refused to wear a mask while shopping at Bunnings. I'm just asking if you've got a mask. Well, it's clear I don't. The company is enforcing a no-mask, no-entry policy. Contravention of that legislation, so that is an offence under section 458. Police were called to a number of Bunnings stores. At Sunshine, a security guard was assaulted. Bunnings is defending their staff. The customer's behaviour towards our team was completely unacceptable. And I can have you sued personally for discriminating against me as a woman. We're not discriminating against anyone. You it's are. Unhappy and unwilling to mask up, she then began to argue what she claimed were her rights from a script on her phone. The Victorian Supreme Court ruling clearly states, Judge Kay says that you guys have no rights. It's the same statement the woman who breached the police checkpoint has since posted on her Facebook. She's gone into hiding. If you're just making a selfish choice that, you know, your um, alleged personal liberty, quoting some, I don't know, something you've read on some website, you know, this is not about human rights. Well, there's, there's, there's 10 families that are going to be burying someone in the next few days. Wear a mask. The health minister tweeting, you have no human rights when you're dead. People like this, you know, they rant amongst their, themselves on Facebook and they don't pose a danger to anybody else. But in the middle of a pandemic, these idiots are a danger to everyone else. Police have issued 126 fines over the last 24 hours. You're going to receive a $1,600 fine for breaching the Chief Health Officer's direction. All right. I do not consent. And despite backlash from conspiracy theorists, won't be backing down. Have I committed a crime? Yes. yes. It's a criminal matter now for not wearing a mask. Yes, correct. Regardless of threats. Okay. And if you do arrest us, mm -hmm. you, we will be suing you okay. uh, for armed kidnapping. Police say their leniency is starting to wear thin. They have used a lot of discretion since the mandatory mask rules have come into play, but they have stated today they will not hesitate to find those who are blatantly doing the wrong thing. Mitch? Tegan Dolling at police headquarters. Thank you. As for the claims made by the woman who confronted Bunnings staff later in 7 News, we'll look at them in more detail and fact-check them with expert legal advice. That's coming up a little later. 
Melbourne's Austin Hospital is on the front line in the battle against COVID. The hospital was among the first to set up dedicated wards and a separate ICU. Tonight, Seven News can take you inside those lockdown areas to show you the remarkable work of those fighting for lives. Behind these doors, the wards where no one wants to be. Can you check this all right? Patients inside Seven East are all battling COVID-19. <coughs> Jason Trubiano is head of the Austin Hospital's COVID wards. Right now, he's the busiest he's ever been. Whenever we see these numbers of three or four hundred, we generally expect to see 10 to 20 per cent of those present to us five to ten days later. <laughs> His team must wear full protective equipment throughout their shifts. They care for coronavirus patients 24 hours a day. These are people across a range of health uh, backgrounds, young people, elderly people. While some people do carry a higher risk of complications from COVID, doctors want it known it can be dangerous for all ages and harm those without underlying issues. I think it's a really important message that young people can be equally infected. We've got people that are my age, and I consider myself young, still in hospital at the moment. The confronting reality is that anyone can get terribly sick with COVID. Right now, there are 30 infected patients inside these locked down COVID wards, while downstairs in intensive care, a further three people are battling the virus. And staff are anxiously waiting on test results for another two patients who they strongly suspect have COVID-19. For them and their families, this is extraordinarily terrible. Inside the ICU, patients with coronavirus are quarantined inside these pods. For the safety of all, there are limits on who can enter. The work is demanding, the care constant. We're working very hard to make sure that the workload is balanced by rotating teams and giving people some downtime where we possibly can. The Austin Hospital was among the first to set up dedicated COVID wards and teams. And now as the state battles a surging second wave, staff are preparing. Already they've doubled the number of beds inside the ICU and added an extra 60 ventilators. The extra equipment is stored on site for quick access. Not bleeding very well. <laughs> to the small number of those people still in doubt over the severity of this pandemic, as someone who speaks to families of loved ones of people who are dying, let me assure you, to us and in healthcare and to those families of the sick patients, this is incredibly real. Christy Mayer, 7 News. Thanks to all our health professionals. The Chief Health Officer has warned against people wearing a certain type of face mask. He says those with valves can still allow the disease to spread. After becoming compulsory, face masks have also become fashion. Don't leave the house without one. I put lavender oil on, so it was smells nice. Some are still trying to find comfort behind the cloth. Annoying. Sweaty. <laughs> really sweaty. As they become our new normal, different varieties have emerged. Face masks, face shields and masks with valves. The actual masks that you see with these little valves sitting in the side, unfortunately they can actually let virus in and out so they're not nearly as effective. The Chief Health Officer has gone further, tweeting no valves on masks for COVID-19, thanks. Face shields have become a popular choice. This Melbourne grandfather is making more than 100 a day. He's donating thousands to charities. I told people the material cost was $1 per shield. They could pay whatever they wanted and anything above that means that I could uh, print the shields and give them away to anyone who needed them. Experts say it's now a personal choice between face shields and masks. People may find a shield a bit more comfortable. This is actually sometimes feeling a little bit claustrophobic. Seven News has been told GPs are now being flooded by calls from people seeking exemptions from wearing face masks because of asthma or mental health, even if their condition isn't serious. They're calling for clearer guidelines on who is eligible. Cassie Zervos, Seven News. There's more criticism of the COVID Safe app, with software developers pointing to major failings. But medical chiefs are standing by the controversial contact tracing tool. Build as the magic bullet. Download the COVID Safe app to catch COVID. Download the app COVID Safe before it spread. Download the COVID Safe app, please. 
Three months on, the COVID Safe app is copping some terrible reviews. Well, the app just isn't working, Tim. That's the cold, hard truth. Within hours of the app launching, we were finding issues that allowed users to be tracked by their phone. Ex-Google developer Jim Musared says on Android phones, the app fails to automatically update, so leaves old problems unresolved. On iPhones, the Bluetooth ping meant to record nearby devices simply hits a software limit. The government knew the application wasn't working, yet they were spending taxpayers' money on advertising, and that's criminal. App experts say from Australia's 14,000 COVID cases, we should have a percentage on how often the Bluetooth ping worked, or should have worked but didn't. The states release some numbers. In New South Wales, the app has tracked just six cases before contact traces. In Victoria, none. And some of the app's fiercest critics tell us Australians should not yet wipe it from their phone. They acknowledge the small chance of tracing a COVID case is worth the software bugs. Tim Lester, 7 News. Tim Watson joins us now. And, Tim, another AFL star has headed home from the Queensland hub. That's right, Mitch. Dan Hanbury touched down a short time ago. Tom Brown has the details live from the Gold Coast. Tom. Tim is the second player the Saints who are flying near the top of the ladder have lost from their Noosa hub in the space of four days. Nathan Brown and now Dan Hanbury. Brett Ratton flagged that Hanbury suffered another hamstring setback on Friday. We reported today that he had to return to Melbourne, as you can see this afternoon. We'll have surgery on that right hamstring, which I understand will end Hanbury's season. He's managed. It's a heartbreaking situation. Just 10 games in one and a half seasons for the Saints. We'll hear from Hanbury on his future, his immediate future, in sport. And, Tim, the Perth hub tonight has expanded. Carlton and Hawthorne, as you can see, landing in over the past 24 hours. We'll have the latest on Patrick Cripps and whether he's getting a rough ride from the umpires shortly in sport, Tim. Thanks, Tom. Coming up in sport, Scott Pendlebury, a no-show for the Pies. We'll have all the fallout from the Magpies mauling in Perth as the Eagles run right. Connor McKenna pulls out the party tricks as the Bombers survive in a thriller against the Crows. And Mitch will have Nathan Buckley's reaction in sport too. Absolute mauling for your Pies today. I'll look forward to that reaction. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. <laughs> If you use your mobile phone while driving, we have a warning for you tonight. The first high-tech cameras that will catch you out are about to be switched on. The extraordinary number of fines they're likely to generate is ahead. Also, a nine-year-old girl among the dead as a plane crashes into homes. How it happened. Who's topped the AFL players' rich list after taking a COVID haircut? And later, one woman's anti-mask tirade against Bunning staff. We put her claims to the test. Seven News, brought to you by Optus. So, in the kitchen, there can be a massive loop. <laughs> Real love is here. I think all farmers hope you'll fall in love. We've had crazy chemistry from the beginning. Sunset tick, sitting in a bathtub with a gorgeous girl. Tick and tick. We're all here for the same reason, to fall in love. Any girl gets jealous about that. Yeah, I'm in a bloody pickle, mate. I'm ready. It's raining! It's finally rain. raining! It's super important that I pick the right girl. I don't want to get it wrong. New Farmer Wants a Wife. Next up on 7.
Voltar and Osteogel 12 hourly for a joint pain. I <laughs> start exercising again. With just two applications a day, Voltar and Osteogel 12 hourly gives you joint pain relief for the whole day and all night. Actually, exercise is not so bad. Voltaren, the joy of movement. With delicious chicken chorizo pasta, mouth-watering mushroom risotto and slow-cooked lamb, dining in just got a whole lot easier. You Foods' new winter menu out now. Comfort food worth staying in for. My dentist said enamel should be great on the outside and on the inside. Go Pro with Oral-B Pro Health. It's formulated with active strength technology that strengthens enamel on the inside. Plus, it protects the outside from erosion. Go Pro with Oral-B Pro Health. At Coles, you'll save during our baby and toddler event with specials on baby food, toddler milk and more. Like Huggies Newborn or Ultra Dry Jumbo range for just $25. Coles, good things, great value. At the Mazda Open Road Sale, you'll discover great value, like Mazda CX-9 Sport from 45990 Drive Away. And right now, across the state, we're still open to support you. With McDelivery, Macca's comes to you contact free. For a limited time, get free delivery on Macca's orders $25 or more via the Uber Eats app. Search Macca's social pages for the promo code. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? World-leading technology which looks into cars to find drivers using their phones is about to hit our roads. Developed here in Melbourne, it's set to have a massive impact and rake in millions in fines. Mobile phone addicts, you can drive, but you can't hide. From Tuesday, distracted drivers will be exposed by technology developed in Melbourne which peeks into cars and onto laps. A staggering number of drivers who, who use their phone while they're behind the wheel. Groundbreaking software scans images and rates the chances of it catching a lawbreaker. The system will give a confidence score on how likely um, phone use or illegal phone use is. It's like driving blindfolded. Uh, it's like being well and truly over 0.05. Distracted driving is one of the biggest risk factors when it comes to crashes on our roads. The photos are taken by portable or fixed cameras up high, day or night, even in the rain. A human always verifies every image. The three-month trial won't fine anyone. It will help the state government decide whether to use it, but the Premier seems confident. Once that trial period's over, if you're on your phone, every chance that this is going to pick you up. New South Wales started using the technology last December. During its three-month trial, 8.3 million vehicles were snapped. 100,000 of them revealed drivers illegally touching devices. That halved pretty quickly in New South Wales and it continues to reduce. It's going to be a game-changer, absolutely. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. Three people have been killed after a plane plummeted into suburban homes in the US minutes after takeoff, sending a fireball into the sky. The plane's pilot and a nine month old girl are among those killed. As a fireball engulfs homes, neighbouring residents run into the blaze, attempting to pull out anyone they could from the burning wreck of a crashed plane. Oh my God. I think a plane just crashed into their house. This is our neighbours. A Piper 32A burst into flames as it hit the ground in suburban Salt Lake City, causing three nearby houses to catch fire. Oh, holy sh the plane's pilot, a female passenger and a nine-month-old girl were killed. Two other children, two and 12 years old, were injured. Another woman is in a critical condition. A medical helicopter was brought in as firefighters put out the flames. Multiple injuries and possible casualties that not yet have been confirmed. Authorities say the single engine plane had just taken off from the nearby South Valley Regional Airport at around 1.30 in the afternoon. US Federal Aviation Authorities will be brought in to investigate. We're just right now releasing people to go to their homes with an escort so that they're not entering the crime scene. Any relationship between those on board is yet to be confirmed. Charred homes and the plane's blackened wreck, all that's left behind. In the United States, Amelia Brace, 7 News.
Peter Green, a founding member of the band Fleetwood Mac, has died. Considered one of the best blues guitarists of his generation, Green formed the band with Mick Fleetwood in 1967. Despite departing just four years later, Green was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame alongside his bandmates in 1998. He was 73. Only two AFL players are expected to pocket more than $1 million this season because of COVID-19. A Herald Sun analysis of players' wages has GWS goal kicker Jeremy Cameron as 2020's highest paid star, followed by injured Sydney Swans champion Lance Franklin. Fremantle's Nat Fife comes in third with an estimated income of up to $900,000. Tigers superstar Dustin Martin is fourth in the mid to high 800s, with Carlton's Jack Martin fifth. Across the competition, players are handing back about 28% of their contracted salary because of the pandemic. People needing organ transplants have been caught up in the COVID crisis. Next, how the emergency is risking lives not just of those who fall victim to the virus. Also, a family's lucky escape from a house fire blamed on a heater. A tense standoff in the United States as armed protesters face off. And how's this for bizarre? A gamer attacked by a magpie. Tonight, 8.30. This is great. I will ask you once more. You knew. Yes! A man died! Between Two Worlds starts tonight, 8.30 on 7. I'll tell you what's for dinner tonight. It is slow-cooked Mexican beef. I'm going to serve it in tacos. You can do it any way you want, but here's the important part. You start off with some beautiful chuck beef, OK? And then you make a Mexican dry rub for it. So just go ahead and throw your oregano, your cumin, your chilli powder, and your cayenne pepper, a little bit of black pepper, and, of course, that garlic powder. OK, you stir it together and then you just sprinkle it over your beef. It's a really good, affordable way to make delicious Mexican food. Go ahead and toss it around. You can turn them over. This is one of those wonderful dishes that once you've made it once, I promise you, it will become a part of your repertoire because you'll just fall in love with it. Oh, immediately, the spices, the aroma, the flavour, you just know that Mexican food is full of all those things. And every time you cook it, I tell you what, the neighbours come knocking because they're like, what's for dinner? <laughs> I can smell it from here. Then we clean up, we're going to cut some onions, some garlic, and while we're browning this off, we throw that in together. You put a little bit of water and it's going to go in the oven really slow. So about 150 fan forced or 130 without a fan. Drop your lid on and it's going to be in there for about four hours. Set it and forget it. All right, now the perfect accompaniment to this as a taco is this guy, butternut pumpkin. So all I'm going to do here, you leave these in nice big pieces because, of course, when they cook, they are going to shrink. All right, so it goes in. Give it a quick drizzle of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. So once you've seasoned and oiled your pumpkin, it goes into the oven 200 to 250 degrees for about 20 minutes. So once your beef has had a few hours to braise, this one's been in for about three and a half hours. You can take a look at it. Oh, yeah, baby. What we're going to do next is pull those big chunks of beef out and I'll stick them in this bowl. Then we're going to separate the fat and the sauce and we're going to mix that back through. OK, so we discard the fat, come back to your beef and then pull it. Just use a couple of forks and it is just lovely. Then, of course, you want to get that juice, sans fat, and go ahead and pour that straight back over the top. I'm throwing some sort of tortillas into the pan. The truth is, either one of these two things would make a great taco, but together, <laughs> it's going to be unbelievable. Don't mind if I do. Mm. A family has escaped their burning home in Melbourne's southeast. Firefighters were called to the Doveton property just before one o'clock. 
One person was taken to hospital after being overcome by smoke. It's believed the blaze was caused by a heater. The COVID crisis is threatening lives, not just those of the thousands being infected. Vital organ donations rely on mercy dashes across the nation, but restrictions are now slowing down the life-saving process. Gindi, central Queensland. <coughs> 209 people and the liver of an outsider who gave a big-hearted bushy life. I swelled up massively like a nine-month pregnant woman and... Um, was full of fluid and my liver had failed. John Hammond had to live like he was dying for six months. Born with a genetic disease, he finalised his will, farewelled his wife and son and fought to be fit for transplant. We both just cried. It was unbelievable. I had this new chance at life. The pandemic has made the complex national organ allocation process more difficult. The commercial airline schedule relied on to relay donor tissue and transplant teams evaporated. Then there are restrictions in ICUs, compounding grief for families who say goodbye in gloves and gowns and then graciously confirm last wishes. We've had to work with the ICUs and the families to actually make sure we can meet the flights that are available to us. Transplants have haven't stopped, but donor registrations have. 15,000 fewer people have signed up to donate life. It takes 30 seconds. There's a link on our Facebook page. Erin Edwards, 7 News. It's been a tense day in the US city of Louisville as hundreds of militia members armed with assault rifles demanded justice for a police shooting victim. They were met by another armed group with police trying to keep both sides apart a show of firepower in a city on edge. But as hundreds of members of what's called the NFA coalition gathered to march, suddenly gunfire. People running for cover in the confusion. Three militia members were injured, but by one of their own. Police say the gun had gone off accidentally. The group demanding justice for Brianna Taylor, the paramedic shot and killed in her own apartment in March by police who'd targeted the wrong home as protests continue to rage in Portland, with another showdown between demonstrators and federal agents. The sight of a Navy veteran being tear-gassed and beaten by officers last weekend, seeing other military veterans turn out to support Black Lives Matter protesters. Anger over federal officers being deployed in Portland, helping fuel another protest in Seattle, with buildings damaged and more than a dozen people arrested, with Donald Trump vowing to send more officers to more cities this this week in the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. And communities in southern Texas already battling coronavirus have a new threat to contend with. Hurricane Hannah has made landfall near Corpus Christi, bringing flash flooding and punishing winds over 140 kilometres per hour. It's feared blackouts may put COVID patient lives at risk, especially those on ventilators. Now, here's something you've probably never heard before and probably won't again. A man playing video games has been attacked inside his house by a magpie. When former warehouse manager Rhys Lynch was three hours into an online gaming session, something out of the ordinary stopped him in his tracks. What the f***ing magpie in my house? Get out of here! And all of a sudden, a bird came into my house and um, it spooked me. Reese kept on playing, but then... The because we were in overtime and I couldn't let the boys down. But when I sat back down, I come and smack me back in the face. The video of the incident, recorded on his streaming device, went viral, viewed worldwide. Experts say the indoor attack is a freak phenomenon. It is totally about them trying to protect their chicks up in the nest from what they regard as some sort of threat. Is they've decided that they're a serious threat to be taken seriously. The magpie swooping season is usually around August, so it's a mystery as to what it was doing in Campbelltown at this time of the year and why it chose Reese as its target. I think my ego was hurt more than anything. <laughs> it's great that I put a smile on people's faces in this time. For now, it's back to target practice for the 28-year-old who lost his job during the COVID crisis, but has now found himself with a new, very important gig. <laughs> Make my wrangler, maybe. <laughs> Samantha Brett, 7 News.
We need a bit of light relief. Next, a woman's anti-mask rant against Bunnings staff. We put her claims to the tests. Find out where she stands. They're back. What's new with the latest Coles collectibles? And meet the likely number one player in this year's AFL draft. Next up on 7, real love is here. The most beautiful love stories have been born from the only show that proves the power of love. New Farmer Wants a Wife, next up on 7. You're just, you're so loyal. You're always so excited to see me. You're my best friend. I mean, you do drool a little in your sleep, but I know you're the one for me. So, please accept this Daily Dog as a sign of my love for you. Daily Dog, a beef-based vitamin for that special someone in your life. Let's do this again tomorrow. Changes we've made during coronavirus to help stop the spread will continue to play an even bigger part into the future. That's why we all need to keep making COVID safe choices, like maintaining physical distancing and practicing good hygiene. To protect others, we need to stay at home when unwell with cold or flu-like symptoms, seek medical care if needed, and get tested for COVID-19. If you haven't already, download the COVID Safe app. Find out more at health.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Join any combined hospital and extras cover online and we'll waive the two and six month wait on extras. Plus, join by July 31 and get up to $300 off your policy. Join NIB today. It's worth it. I remember seeing this thing towing an earth over like it was nothing. It was incredible. I just had to follow. Here I am, owner of a small metal island. We started Boccaccio in 1958, more or less from nothing. We were there selling cheeses and mortadellas, parma ham, before the supermarkets we even knew what dullies looked like. I've got 11 grandchildren working on the cash registers and a few more to follow shortly. Food and wine is the centre of our lives. Picacho IGA, as we are here, is like 45 years old. Our customers are, are basically friends and family. They've seen us all grow up. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of healthy breakfasts with delicious Heritage Mill traditional oats, one kilo pack, down down to $3.50. Find more ways to save at coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. As we reported earlier tonight, staff at a Bunnings store have been hassled by a customer refusing to wear a mask. Blake Johnson is here to break it down, and Blake had put the workers in a challenging position. It absolutely did, Mitch, but let's try to clear up truth from emotion. This is the moment the woman enters the store. I beg your pardon? It's all right. I'm just asking if you've got a mask. Well, it's clear I don't. And you are not authorised to ask me or question me about it. Now, the woman went on to quote the Charter of Human Rights, but being ordered to wear a face covering is not a human rights violation, something that's been acknowledged by Amnesty International. All right, here's another claim. I can have you sued personally for discriminating against me as a woman. We're not discriminating against anyone. You it's are. It's a condition of entry to all bunnies. It's not. It's an unlawful condition of entry. Well, that's simply not true. A government spokesperson has told 7 News the store is well within its rights to implement the rule. It's much like a dress code at the pub. Now, as we saw, this customer clearly wanted to make a fuss by recording the video and posting it to social media. This is a public place. That means I can record anything and everything that I want to, despite your request for me not to. Now, in this case, the woman is right. Under Victorian laws covering video recordings, she is allowed to film them because it's in the public view. But, Pete, you'd have to say the Bunnings staff handled a difficult situation very well. A lot of weird things going on out there at the moment. Blake, thanks very much indeed. Move over stickies. Coles has announced a new range of collectibles for kids. Inspired by the award-winning series, shoppers can collect a little treehouse book. 
It's a collection of existing stories and new stories and new characters. So there's a good mix of some of the old that kids love and some new characters as well. The offer is available from Wednesday. A new portrait of the Queen has been unveiled with Her Majesty logging in to watch via video chat. The painting was commissioned by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, the virtual unveiling the first of its kind for the monarch. Well, I'm glad I've had a chance to see it. Hope I'll see it in real life one day. The Queen sat for the portrait pre-COVID, but artist Miriam Escafé completed it months later during lockdown. Junior footy, as we know, is on hold because of COVID, but it hasn't stopped the hype surrounding a draft contender compared to Buddy Franklin. A Scotch college student with a huge leap is rated by many as the best emerging talent in the country. Meet Jamara Eugle Hagen, the AFL's soaring draft prospect. Everyone has their pros and cons, and um, my pros is definitely uh, contested marking which I just use to my advantage. You don't have to look too hard for supporting evidence. Oh, oh, up there, Kazali. Raul with the kick to walk. Eugle oh. Hagen. Lee Clark was lucky enough to coach Matty Raul and Eugle Hagen at the Oakley Chargers last year. We've all seen the talent and the, uh, the traits of Matt Raul shine through at AFL level. Jamara will probably provide more highlights than the other boys. The Bulldogs have first rights to him under the Next Generation Academy system. So I've got a soft spot for doggies, especially of what they've done for me. Eugle Hagen idolises Lance Franklin. He's a good role model, just coming from an Indigenous background, having a left foot and being a key forward, which makes me look up to him. And his mates aren't the only ones dubbing him the next buddy. All the boys talk to me about it and like they get in my head, but um, at the end of the day, they're just words. Obviously, we're two different people. Eugle Hagen hails from Warrnambool, but boards at Scotch College. I'm just looking at it, focusing on school the last couple of 12 weeks and hopefully have a bigger footy career at the end of the 12 weeks. His skills on show today... That's in, that's in, that's it. Mark Stevens. Seven News. More sport next with Tim Watson. And, Tim, it's been a dirty day over in the West for the Pies. Mitch, the skipper was a dramatic late scratching and he's not the only injury concern either for Nathan Buckley, who's just addressed the media. We'll have the latest on Scott Penelbury next as the Eagles stake their premiership credentials. The Bombers walk headfirst into a Crows ambush but manage to have the last laugh. And more trouble for Dan Hanbury as he lands back in Melbourne. Hear directly from him next. Captain Strand, we want you to come down to Texas to build an entire station from scratch. Okay, but I choose the firefighters. Have you got what it takes to This crew can't just be good. They gotta be the best. Rob Lowe. Let's show them what we got. And Liv Tyler. In Texas, you do what I say, Captain. Get ready for the new action thrill ride. 911 Lone Star. Monday, 8.30 on 7. Sam is fearless at studying tiger sharks. Just don't ask him to fix a leaky tap. It's amazing what you can't do. Task smarter. Air Tasker. Today, parents face constant judgment. But none of that matters. Because when your baby is happy and healthy, you know your way is the right way. So you can feel as comfortable in your skin as your baby's skin feels in Huggy Snappies. It must be love, love, love. Nothing more, nothing less. Huggies, be comfortable in your skin. When your little one has cold and flu symptoms, you can trust Nurofen for children. It effectively relieves the four signs of cold and flu and best of all, it starts working on fever from just 15 minutes and lasts up to eight hours. For fast, long-lasting fever relief, get Nurofen for children for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. What makes CrimSafe Australia's strongest security door? Only CrimSafe has screw clamp technology that locks the mesh into the frame on impact. If it's not crim safe, it's not crim safe. 
with delicious chicken chorizo pasta, mouth-watering mushroom risotto and slow-cooked lamb. Dining in just got a whole lot easier. U Foods' new winter menu out now. Comfort food worth staying in for. I love a sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons. I love her jewel sea. The beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. Because sometimes it's more than just growing pains. Pooper offers an online program to help you manage your mental well-being. Pooper. Because life happens. Call today. Welcome back. It's been a dirty day for Collingwood in the West. A quad injury to skipper Scott Penelbury further souring an 11-goal drubbing to the Eagles at Optus Stadium. West Coast forward Josh Kennedy was unstoppable, booting seven majors as the Eagles kicked 17 of the last 19 goals. This was not the 48th birthday Nathan Buckley had in mind. The biggest score of the year by anyone by the Eagles today on a, a red letter day for them. For the Pies, trouble struck before the opening bounce. Just hearing that Scott Pendlebury may be a late, 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 late withdrawal. The captain pulling out with quad tightness. Felt like he wasn't going to be able to kick um, through that and he was concerned about you know, really doing some damage to his quad. Eagles defender Jeremy McGovern was also a late out and the Pies forwards made the most of it, especially Darcy Cameron with two early goals. That is a very, very, very good kick. Oh, wow. But the Eagles hit back hard. Matt Nui, yep, yes, yes. Josh Kennedy was unstoppable. The hulking forward kicked four first-half goals. But they fancy him again. Oh, he's turning. The Eagles and their fans fired up, taking an 11-point lead at the main change. The Eagles could sense a kill. Nothing went right for Collingwood. The Eagles could do no wrong, kicking six goals to none in the third term. This now is turning into a good old walloping from West Coast. The Eagles kicked 17 at the last 19 goals, soaring to a 66-point victory. Sensational aerialist is flying Ryan. It was West Coast's fourth straight win. Everything that they were, we weren't today. And in a, in a two-horse um, two race, they were much better than, than we were. John Salby, 7 News. It wasn't pretty, but Essendon survived a huge scare against the winless Adelaide to remain in touch with the top four. The Crows booted one goal five in the last quarter as the Bombers hung on by less than a kick. It wasn't easy, but nothing is in season 2020. Essendon wins by three points. They're all counting for us, absolutely. From the outset, the Crows had an upset in their sights. He was cut in half. As Jacob Townsend and Matt Crouch got a little too close for comfort. Both left bloodied as the Bombers took a seven-point lead into the main break. A patched-up Crouch and Townsend seeing the funny side after cooling off. A suspected syndesmosis injury for Jaden Laverde. The Crows without Brad Crouch and Tom Dude for the second half as Connor McKenna brought some Irish flair to the Adelaide Oval. That's one of the plays of the year. Fittingly, Ned Cahill socketed his first AFL goal. Off the deck! Brilliant! The Bombers looked to be dancing their way out of trouble, but the Crows remained within striking distance. McKenna going from hero to villain. It falls into his lap and he finally puts one through. you got to pick that up. Less than a kick the difference, the Bombers' defence held firm, but the Crows had their chances. He's around the body, it's up in the air, high and wide. We lost the game by, uh, you know, a matter of inches a few weeks ago. We know we've got work to do to continue working on our game. Andrew McCormack, 7 News. Melbourne is out to claim its biggest scalp of the season against Brisbane. Heavy storms on the Gold Coast made for slippery conditions as both sides kicked two goals each in the opening term. And a real chance for Hannon! Oh, he was up and he won't mind at all. It ends in a goal to Fritch. Neville Jetta went into the rooms at the first break after a heavy knock. At the start of the second term, scores are locked at 20 points each. 
St Kilda's rise up the ladder has taken a hit, with Dan Hanabry returning home. Tom Brown broke the news on the Gold Coast today, and Tom Hanabry has responded to his critics. Tim, the Saints recruiting drive has been a spectacular success, but this is going to test their midfield depth at St Kilda. Dan Hanabry now out for the season. He'll have hamstring surgery in coming days. He's 29, has three years to run on a lucrative contract. He's managed just 10 games in a season and a half with St Kilda, but responded to any doubt as he's positive late this afternoon. As much as a lot of people will be doubting um, my ability to get back and consistently um, play week in, week out, I think... I've still got some, some confidence there that um, given my last um, 18 months and some of the work that I have been able to get in, that I, um, I can get back and um, play some season footy. The Saints recovered in Adelaide this morning on their way back to here in Queensland tonight with the Bombers on the same plane. Tim Embry will be happy. Kick one of the snaps, the goals of the season last night from mid-air, as you can see. The latest night on Patrick Cripps is a view this weekend that he's getting a bit of a rough ride. The Carlton star from the umpires denied access to the ball, getting held at times without it. I can tell you tonight that Carlton has previously, I understand and told, has sent footage to the AFL regarding some of these stoppage situations. It'll be interesting to see if the AFL address that this week and indeed Carlton. Cripps, I'm told his ribs are OK. McGovern, he'll have a scan, I'm told, by Carlton tonight on his hamstring tomorrow. Some good news finally for the Hawks of sorts tonight. Tim, Sean Burgoyne has copped a $1,500 fine only for his rough conduct on James Rope bottom. Despite that being reclassified, that rule this year, only a $1,500 fine for Burgoyne. The Hawks desperately need him and in form. They're a difficult season for them, Tim. Thanks, Tom. Yes, and after that win today, the Eagles will probably move into flag favouritism, Mitch, but I still think it's a very open race. Thoroughly deserved after that win today. Collingwood's got some injuries, but I'm not concerned about those. Well done to the Eagles. Oh, very magnanimous from you. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. Jane is next with the forecast. And, Jane, what can we expect this week? Well, Mitch, it is getting warmer. It could reach 17 degrees. But tomorrow, that's still cold. I'll have more after the break. Real love is here. I'm looking for someone to share these vibes. Never expected to have feelings for someone so quickly. My heart has pounded faster and harder than it ever has in my life. Yeah, I'm in a bloody pickle, mate. Will Farmer Harry find the love of his life? She might be the one. New Farmer wants a wife. Next up on Seven. Whatever happens, our low prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. Incredibly heart-wrenching to have a loved one in hospital, critically ill, and be unable to see them, to be unable to visit them, to be unable to hold their hand. Protect yourself. Protect your loved ones. Help protect all Victorians. Please stay at home. Staying apart keeps us together. But it sure is worth it. Lilydale. We're coming to you live from the scene. Tell us what you've got there. Toilet paper? Ah, just dinner stuff. Right. You must have paid an unprecedented price for that during these unprecedented times. Ah, they're from Aldi. Prices are always low. Let's just go. Whatever happens, our low prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. With delicious chicken chorizo pasta, mouth-watering mushroom risotto and slow-cooked lamb, dining in just got a whole lot easier. You Food's new winter menu out now. Comfort food worth staying in for. Outside, it's something to look at. But inside, it's a space to be. A space we fit our lives into. A space that brings us closer. That spans generations. Where we go to let go. 
In a Mazda, this space is 100 years in the making and summed up in two words. Zoom, zoom. The King Living Australian Design Sale is in its final days. Now's the time to save up to 50% on the best in Australian furniture design. So why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King Furniture? Visit us at kingliving.com. This weather report is brought to you by the King Living Australian Design Sale. Hello again. In some eastern suburbs, the fog cleared to sunshine, but much of Melbourne remained covered in low cloud. It was a gloom that never really cleared, keeping it chilly. The city started on 5 and only reached 13. There's a different type of cloud in eastern Victoria, as it is pouring in New South Wales, and a bit of that rain is spreading across the border. It meant that Orbos was only 11 today. A complex area of low pressure is set to slowly move southwards, and that is coming close enough to have a big impact on southeast Victoria. Meanwhile, a cold front, you can see it there, it just slides away to our south as high pressure remains in control. So there's a bit from the front, light showers, not much. Instead, Gippsland is likely to see the rain as that low comes near enough, heaviest on Monday into Tuesday. East Gippsland should see the highest totals with 50 to 100 millimetres. This is east of about Bairnsdale. And that could be dangerous. The ground has been quite dry, so that that whole area is on flood watch for rising rivers in coming days. Around the nation tomorrow, the low brings gusty winds to Brisbane, but it's a sunny day, a top of 21. Sydney has another very wet day, 10 to 35 millimetres in gusty showers. Canberra soaked tomorrow too, but Adelaide, it's just a brief morning shower, then it clears out to sunshine in the afternoon. Perth has a sunny day, then it's the opposite. They'll see showers there at night. To Victoria, the south has light showers in the west and central parts, but that rapidly increases as you head eastwards, as you can see here. We're looking at widespread rain through Gippsland, heavy falls possible east of Orbost. The north of the state is protected by the ranges, so it is dry and there's lots of sunshine. Closer in and Monday's cloudy and the only potentially wet day this week. We do have showers passing through. They're mainly over eastern suburbs but could spread to the west late in the day. It is a cold day but not quite as chilly to start. We range from 9 to 14 in the city. It is a mostly cloudy Monday with the slight chance of showers there. To the eight-day outlook, it continues mostly cloudy on Tuesday, but we are generally dry. There's just the chance of a shower in outer northern and eastern suburbs. So just that outer fringe gets the wet weather on Tuesday. Otherwise, mostly cloudy. It's a top of 15. On Wednesday, we start colder. That sunshine is there, rising right up to 16 degrees. That cloud builds very late in the day, and there is the chance of showers on Wednesday night into the early hours of Thursday morning. So on Thursday, it's 15, but the sun comes back out for the afternoon. That should be absolutely lovely. Now here we have 17 and 17 on Friday and Saturday. There is lots of sunshine there. The chance of showers late Saturday night into Sunday morning but then our next burst of winter arrives on Monday and it is just 13. Mostly cloudy tomorrow. Slight chance of showers. 14 Mitch. We'll take a couple of 17s later yeah. in the week too. Thank you Jane. <laughs> and that's the way it is this Sunday the 26th of July. Thanks for your company. We'll have updates later. For now, from the 7 News team, good night. <laughs>